The Seattle Mariners, they took a huge victory today over the Philadelphia Phillies. Brian Wu on the mound and the offense just exploded. This is the type of game that we want to see from the Mariners every single game for the rest of the season. If the Mariners can play like this, they can be a World Series winning team. 10-2 is your final as the Mariners, they move to 58-53. and They remain tied with Houston atop the American League West. Despite being three and a half games back of the wild card, if they can just stay in that tie with Houston, they have the tiebreaker by head-to-head -head record, they can win the West. The Mariners today, yeah, it was an absolute onslaught of the Phillies. Checking out your summary of this game. Starting off right in the bottom of the first, Victor Robles. Leading off for the Seattle Mariners, and he cracks that home run. We're seeing it right now. Victor Robles, when did he turn it into a freaking stud? I don't know, guys, but he is so good. So he gets things started off with a homer. Then in the second inning, Luke Rayleigh, he snags a three-run homer to make it 4 nothing. Demo, Mitch Hanniger scoring. And then in the same inning, with two outs, the Mariners load the bases up for Justin Turner. And the newcomer, Justin Turner, with the orange beard. Here we're seeing a Rosarena at bat with the orange beard fear the beard of justin turner my goodness he cracks a grand slam we're gonna try to find that for you one sec justin turner where is it here's the Rayleigh. Bl Let, let's show the Rayleigh blast actually look at this watch this thing luke Rayleigh hits an absolute nuke an absolute nuke I believe it's the third longest home run that's ever been hit in T-Mobile Park. Check this out. Yeah, Demo on second. Here goes. That wasn't it. <laughs> there it is. Look at that thing. Third deck for Luke Rayleigh. How about that? But okay. So a few batters later. A few batters later. Here comes bases loaded for Justin Turner. Base is loaded. JT, the newbie. Three career grand slams. Okay. We see it. Almost hits him. And then here it comes. Bam. No doubter. Way out. Welcome to Seattle, Justin Turner. First home game as a Mariner, he hits a grand slam. And that's a great way to welcome the new fan base. Say, hey, Mariners fans. Yeah, I I'm here. I'm here. That was his seventh home run of the season. Mitch Hanniger, he adds on to the damage in the seventh inning. He hits a home run his tenth of the season. Not that he has been amazing this year. And then in the ninth inning, Brandon Marsh with a two-run triple. It doesn't really matter. Mariners win it 10-2. to two. That is your final um, Mariners in the box score. Robles going two for four with a homer. Uh, and actually, I think he wound up with a double as well. Randy Rosarena. He goes one for three. Cal Rally 0 for two. Justin Turner, two for four. Dylan Moore, 0 for two with two walks. Rojas goes one for four. Hanniger, two for four with the homer. His OPS is now up to a whopping 640. I mean, it's better than nothing. Uh, Luke Rayleigh with three runs batted in, one for four. His OPS is now almost back above 700. He's at 698. And Leo Rivas batting ninth goes over four. And the other big story, though, is Brian Wu. You're watching some highlights right now. Brian Wu, for the first time in his career, pitched a full seven innings. Can we take a moment to recognize how huge that is? If Brian Wu can be a guy who can give us seven reliable innings every night, I mean, that's that's a game changer, I think, right? I mean, is that not a game changer? If, if Brian Wu can go seven innings every single night, or even just six, if he can consistently go six innings every start and occasionally mix in seven, that's a game changer. Because so far this year, he's been a five-inning guy, 
and he's been limited pitch count wise. He's been limited health wise. Tonight he goes seven full innings, six strikeouts, no walks, five hits, no earned runs. His ERA is down to 2.08. Brian Wu is turning into an ace. Very quietly, he's turning into an ace. And he's finally able to pitch deeper into games. That's huge. Because in the playoffs, you're going to need four starters. And Brian Wu right now, I think he's your fourth starter. As long as you can count on him to throw six innings in a game. And we are starting to see that out of Brian Wu. So it's always tough for me to pick a player of the game. You love these games. The best types of games is when there's so many guys who could be player of the game that you just don't know who to pick. I am going to go with Justin Turner. But I, I think you could say Brian Wu. You wouldn't be wrong. But for Justin Turner to come in here, first home game as a Mariner to go two for four with four runs batted in, grand slam, obviously. I think that was really impressive. So Justin Turner, congratulations for the first time. You are my player of the game. Brian Wu is the runner-up. But let's talk a little bit about this offense because all of a sudden we're seeing the offense explode. We saw a couple of really good runs in Boston, right? We saw a 10-run game and a 7-run game in Boston. Um, we saw a couple of big games against Chicago. I think there's an 8-run game and a 7-run game at Chicago. So we're starting to see this offense score some runs. We're figuring out how to score runs. And it's interesting that it's all been happening without Julio Rodriguez. I'm not saying Julio has been the problem with the offense, but it does make you think. Ever since Julio left, the offense has been really, really good. Now, maybe that's just them really feeling motivated. Uh, obviously, you need to catch. You need to keep pace with Houston. And, of course, the White Sox, not a great team, but the Red Sox are and the Phillies are. And the fact that you're able to score a bunch of runs against two really good pitching staffs, Boston and Philadelphia, that's huge in my opinion. Because it shows that this team is capable of winning big games in the playoffs. In the playoffs, pitching is going to take you a long ways. It's not going to get you all the way. Somewhere along the way in the playoffs, you have to have offense. And the Mariners are showing that they can do that. Now again... It's weird that it's happening without Julio. I don't I'm not saying Julio is the problem. I am saying Julio isn't hasn't been, not isn't. This season Julio hasn't been good. He hasn't been good. And you can dispute that all you want. You can you can defend Julio all you want. The truth is this season Julio has not been good for the Seattle Mariners. And we did a whole video on it. His OPS right now, 687. He has been average offensively. Great defense. He's going to put up the war. I Don't don't comment about his war. His war is going to be good because he plays center field. Offensively, Julio has been average. So it's interesting to see. We remove Julio from the top of the lineup. We replace him with Robles, who has been insanely hot at the top of the lineup. We replace him with Randy, who's been insanely hot at the top of the lineup. All of a sudden, this lineup is producing, this lineup is hitting. We're seeing guys like Polanco, who have struggled, are playing well. And of course, there's an injury question now with Polanco. That sucks. There's an injury question um, already with Justin Turner, but he played tonight, looked pretty darn good tonight. There's injuries with Gregory Santos. I mean, the, the injuries is a is a major concern, but Julio and Dominic Canson are both scheduled to come back mid-August, potentially even earlier than mid-August. But I really hope that bringing Julio back into this lineup doesn't disrupt it because without Julio, they've been cooking, they've been on fire. I think when Julio comes back, he should be hitting fifth. Is that is that a crazy statement? Because right now we've been going Robles 1, Randy 2, Cal 3, and then Justin Turner cleanup. I would bat Julio 5th. I don't think Julio deserves a spot right now in your top 4. 
because he hasn't. He's not one of the four best hitters this year on this team. So I, I wouldn't try to disrupt that. Those four have been really good lately. The Robles, a Rose. The it's the Robles, Randy, Raleigh, Turner. That's your top four. J Rod fifth, and then you can have Rayleigh or Garver or Polanco. Any one of them can bat sixth and seventh. Canzone could bat sixth or seventh. All of a sudden, that's a really good top seven, and it's a deep top seven. I mean, if Julio's batting fifth, that's a good spot for him to be at right now. And then when JP comes back. Have him hit ninth, honestly. Have him hit ninth. Take the pressure off of JP's bat. Keep letting Robles lead off. Play the hot hand. Eventually, Robles will cool down, I'm sure. And then you can make the switch. But I would love to see this team continue riding the hot hands. Don't thrust Julio back into the top of this lineup. Especially because they've been doing so well without him there. My fear would be you try to insert him into that two or three spot like he has been most of the season, and it's going to cause him to struggle. I would love to see Julio bat fifth. I think that would be the perfect spot for him right now. Uh, With that all being said, player of the game, Justin Turner, barely edging out Brian Wu. And I'm excited to see what the Mariners put up tomorrow. Go M's, go Mariners, go tie for first place atop the division. We are a playoff team right now. Let's hope it continues. We'll see you tomorrow. This is the NW Sportscast. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below.